Welcome back to At The Table. So, when you are reaching for that extra donut, that bowl of popcorn, whatever it is, do you really know what you're hungry for? Mm. Find out when we come back. So welcome back. Today we are delving into something very juicy. And it's all about what are we really hungry for? And so Jill, this is a brand new idea. Mm -hmm. It certainly was for me when I first heard it, that there is more than one kind of hunger. Mm -hmm. I really thought hunger was hunger. And now through what you've been teaching, I'm discovering that there's actually different kinds of hunger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are, in fact, there are seven different types of hunger that have been identified by someone named Jan Chosen Bays. Ah. Um, and they, there may be more than seven types, but the system that she works with, I find to be a pretty good spectrum to cover all of the different things that we might actually be hungry for and where those levels of hunger arise more specifically. Hmm. So, you know, this really reminds <laughs> me of when I discovered that there was different kinds of smart. Mm. And it was very exciting, different kinds of intelligence. Because prior to that, certainly as a child growing up, I thought there was smart and not smart. Mm -hmm. and, and really, that was it. You either were smart or you weren't. And when the different kinds of intelligences were identified, it just opened up a whole different feeling to me about intelligence, being smart, and I could suddenly sort of put myself in that and start to see, you know, what kind of intelligences do I have? You know, some people have athletic intelligence or musical intelligence. Some people have interpersonal Mm -hmm. intelligence and intrapersonal. In other words, they're very um, wise in relation to themselves and knowing what they think in the field. So anyway, those intelligences came to mind when you were talking mm -hmm. about the same thing, not just one kind of hungry, but seven kinds of hunger. Mm -hmm. All right, so tell us about them. Okay, so the seven levels of hunger are, first of all, eye hunger. Mm. which is really about everything that we see. And our eye hunger is satisfied mainly by beauty, mm. by colors, by uh, shapes, presentation, but generally by beauty. Okay. Nose hunger, which is pretty self-explanatory. Mm. Nose hunger is satisfied by beautiful aromas or aromas of any type that we feel would be most um, intriguing or mm -hmm. stimulating perhaps for us or soothing. Mouth hunger is the third one. And this has to do with all of the sensations that we distinguish in our mouth, the textures that we might oh, feel, right. as well as the tastes. Mm -hmm. But the mouth is really an organ of noticing sensations and on many levels. So, um, so the more that we have variety in our diets, for example, can help to satisfy our mouth hunger. That's such an important one, I know, because I have a friend who literally, she has to have crunch. Ah, yeah, yeah. And if there isn't crunch in a meal, Mm -hmm. It just, it misses the mark for her. Yes. And that literally is about that sensation, as you said, in the mouth. Yes. Yeah, so we can pay attention. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the next one, the fourth one is stomach hunger. Mm -hmm. So that is having the right amount of food so that you feel satisfied, as well as the kind of food and how that feels in your stomach. So there are times where your stomach gets really empty and you're like, oh, I'm hungry, my stomach mm -hmm. is rumbling, I can feel that empty yeah. <laughs> hole there that right. I want to fill. So okay. uh, most of us have some experience with that. The next kind is cellular hunger. Ooh. So that one sounds a little bit strange, but when mm. you think about it, really cellular hunger has to do with having the essential elements, the nutrients that our cells need for life. Mm. So water actually would be one of those elements, okay. but other vitamins and minerals, iron, okay. calcium, things like that, those are all falling into the category of cellular hunger. 
So I can sort of connect with it when I think of, you know, thirst, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm dehydrated, the mm -hmm. cells need the water, my mm -hmm. whole body needs water. Mm -hmm. Are there any other signals that you can, just so I'm trying to understand the cellular hunger? Mm -hmm. That one's a little bit harder to tune into, but the way that I experience it sometimes is that I might be in the grocery store mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily know like that my cells need a particular thing but as I'm looking around at the foods that are there I might mm. pick them up and have a really strong craving for say broccoli which isn't always there <laughs> but it's happened to me where like I had a week once where I wanted to eat broccoli almost every meal no wow. kidding and all I can make of it is that there was something mm -hmm. that I could hear inside of my body that just kept telling me that there was something that broccoli had right. that my cells were really hungry for. Okay. So sometimes you won't actually know what it is, but you'll have a sense of the food that that, that might be right. contained in. Mm -hmm. That really, you know, resonates and harkens back to the first video we did on listening to your yes, body. Yes, Starting to really develop that connection yes. so that you, I honestly don't think I've ever had a craving <laughs> for broccoli, maybe I will, but that listening mm -hmm. and rapport mm -hmm. with what does our system crave. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. what's next? Okay, so the next level of hunger is mind hunger. So, Ooh. yeah, so Ooh. this one often has a lot more to do with, say, needing variety or minds want stimulation. And so really what the mind is actually satisfied by is stillness. Oh. Yes. You went the and awareness. opposite direction of where I so thought you were going. That's a difficult one. And some, some people would say that our minds are actually never satisfied. They are always hungry. Yeah. That's and right. the only way to get to a feeling of satisfaction with your mind is to come to stillness. Okay. Through something like meditation, for example, or eating a meal with your full presence and awareness so that you have the experience ah. of having eaten. Okay, so yeah. rather we're not trying to stimulate the mind, no. we're trying to nourish it no. by what it needs, which mm -hmm. is the opposite yes. of the busy mind. Mind hunger often feels like, I want more stimulation, I want the next piece of cake, I want this or that. Yeah, and yeah. it's really coming from not the place that actually would most fulfill that and serve oh, us. Okay, yeah. Yeah. thank you. And then finally, uh, the hunger that I um, resonate with the most, perhaps in some ways, is heart hunger. I often talk about cooking with love, yeah. but also how we eat, eating with love, mm. is another way that we can satisfy our heart hunger. So what I mean by that more specifically is, for example, um, how could I eat a meal in such a way that I am nourishing my heart at the same time mm. that I'm nourishing my physical body? Right. and my senses. Right. So that might be with setting a beautiful tablecloth, mm -hmm. uh, the colors, some of the other elements yeah. we talked about, but just some feeling of intimacy for myself in that experience of mm -hmm. eating. And also heart hunger is satisfied by intimacy in general with other people, with yeah. nature, a sense of connection in right. many ways. Yeah. You know, I just had a moment of sadness there as you were talking because I was raised with six kids mm. in our family and my mom was often the main cook, although my dad also cooked. But that I've seen over and over often how women in particular, you know, can do all the work for a meal mm -hmm. and it's on the table and people are already eating mm -hmm. and she's not even sitting down. And it's yeah. just, it just, yeah. it kind of touches my heart. And, and to me, it's sad that we don't take that moment to really honor the mm -hmm. person who's cooked it the beautiful mm -hmm. food, as you say, the table, whatever. And so I think that's what's tapping into me mm -hmm. for, you know, as you say, heart hunger. Mm -hmm. The hunger of being really honored and loved and treasured and that food gets connected with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, there's, so there's seven levels of hunger. Yeah. So definitely there's a little bit of work to do as we start to get acquainted with these mm -hmm. to become able to tap into in the moment, what am I really hungry for? Yeah. And to be able to distinguish which of one, if and sometimes actually several, it, it's not always just one at a time. There could be several levels that you're hungry for yeah. at one given time. So tuning into your body, as we talked about in the first video, is a great mm -hmm. way to start to be able to distinguish that. Yeah. And the other part that I know we've talked about is it gets more complicated if we can't read our own signals. Mm -hmm. 
You know, and I often use the metaphor of a GPS that's going to tell us what direction to be going. Well, your GPS mm. for your body is an internal GPS. And if there's interference, you're not going to be able to read the signals well. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get a clear message. And so lots of times people say, well, you know, what creates interference? Or how do I know if I have interference? And so mm -hmm. there's a few things. One is, if you repeatedly start and stop things and don't go to completion, something's interrupting you, something's creating interference from you staying the course. That's important to pay attention. If you feel restricted the minute you think of changing your eating patterns, uh. the body, something's going out of alignment, you know you want to maybe eat in a particular way mm -hmm. or a little more healthy or a little more raw or whatever mm -hmm. it is, and you get that immediate signal of, no, I think I'll go have the burger. Mm -hmm. There's interference. There's something that's conflicted within your system. Mm -hmm. And conflict oh. is the biggest indicator, of course, of interference. Mm -hmm. You know, if you find yourself doing behaviors that you don't feel good about, so hiding food, sneaking food, mm. whatever. If it creates a feeling inside of you not feeling good about yourself, mm. that's a signal. Mm -hmm. And lastly, if you make excuses for yourself about why you can't eat in a healthy way or follow a path, when you get into making excuses, it's really already telling you you've taken a step off the path. You're not in true alignment with yourself in an integrity. Mm. And so these indicators point to something mm -hmm. is not working right. Your system is actually on guard. It's in protection mode. It's protecting something like that burger it thinks it wants. Mm -hmm. It's in a protection mode because it feels the deprivation is imminent or mm -hmm. something. And it's very key to start to release those, mm -hmm. which is why I'm so excited about our webinar. Me too. Yeah, when we start to really get into how does sabotage work in your system, and then the billion dollar question, of course, what can I do about it? Mm -hmm. So that's what's coming up in the webinar, which is? On October 3rd at 7.30. Yep. We will both be there, mm -hmm. ready to share some great information and to hear your questions and comments. And so we look forward to you joining us. You'll be receiving information. There'll be information on exactly how to join the webinar. If for some reason you're not getting this information and you want to be part of the webinar, please send us an email. You can reach Jill at? At Jill at ConsciousTable.com or Lynn Samita at mirrorspoint.com. So we look forward to jo you joining us on October 3rd. We hope you have a great next little while. Bye for now. Bye for now and be nourished. Hi, it's Lynn here. Jill and I are very excited about our upcoming webinar on October the 10th, beginning at 7.30 p.m. In deciding about joining the webinar, here are some things to consider. Are you tired of the disempowering cycle of creating healthy eating goals and then acting in the opposite way? Are you frustrated with backsliding on your intentions? Do you want to feel free and empowered to make the changes you desire? In our webinar, we're going to talk about all of these questions and look more closely at how you can stop the cycle that undermines your healthy eating. This is a free online event and you can register for it simply by leaving your name and email address below to make sure that you get all the information you need to participate. As an option to the webinar, we are also offering free live events in different locations starting on October the 10th at West Vancouver Library, 2 to 4 p.m. October 11th, Curves Fitness Centre in Kitsilano, 2.30 to 4 p.m. October 15th, Utopia Books and Gifts, Lonsdale Avenue, North Vancouver, 7 to 9 p.m. October 17th, Le Physique in False Creek, 7 to 9 p.m. And October the 18th, Presence Gifts 
in Horseshoe Bay, 7 to 9 p.m. You must pre-register for these events even though they are free because seating is very limited. Register by calling 604-922-1330. Jill and I look forward to sharing with you soon, either in the webinar or in the live events.